Hello, and welcome to today's episode of... Kilimanjaro! Today we're going to be taking a look at something a little special for us in the U.S. This is the Bosch EasyCut 12. You'll notice this isn't the typical Bosch blue that you're familiar with, like this tool here. This is a Bosch green tool. They aren't sold in the U.S. Uh, it's a line that's aimed more at the consumers as opposed to the blue tool. It's mostly spent more as a prosumer or professional level tool. So fortunately, through the wonders of the internet, you can order one of these from Amazon in the U.K. Um, it comes you know, in a nice box like this. This is the, the, just the tool version, so it doesn't come with a battery or charger. Amazon's happy to ship that to you in the U.S. Uh, the shipping rates are actually quite reasonable. It was about $15 to have this shipped uh, in about three days. Interestingly, it didn't come from the U.K., which I ordered it from Amazon.co.uk. It actually shipped from Spain. I was a bit surprised to see that. So the shipping rate's quite reasonable, and with the, the low price of the pound these days, the tool actually only cost about 100, 100 US dollars. Now, there's a bit of a problem ordering power tools from the UK. They use a different electrical system. So that's why I got the one that didn't have the battery and the charger. I had no need for, no need for a charger that's not going to fit into the outlets we have. And I already had a bunch of these Bosch 12-volt batteries. I mistakenly assumed that the batteries would be the same. However, the batteries from the blue tools don't fit into the green tools or at least the US blue tool, blue tool batteries. I'm assuming they, they have the same batteries for the blue tools uh, overseas. However, they are the physically the same batteries. So there's two different styles of the blue tool batteries, one where the bottom cap is a separate piece, and one where you can see there's a seam here, the top is a separate piece. Good news is if you take off that bottom piece, put it aside, the battery slots right in, tool works without a problem. So that's great news. Um, I'm rather disappointed with Bosch that they order have two different battery styles. It's not real nice that if you have some green tools and some blue tools, they're not going to work well together. The tool itself is very nicely made. It's all made out of glass fiber reinforced nylon. Feels very rigid. It's well designed, you know, fits well for your hand, except for the stupid lock on it. It's got some nice rubber over molding on the back here where your hand's going to go and up here where you might push down on it. The base here is made out of nice thick stamped steel. So not gonna, you don't have to worry about it warping or deflecting even if you're going to drop it. One thing I don't like though, um, this little tang here, which is supposed to align it with the blade at, so you can help cut a little bit straighter, doesn't actually line up perfectly with the blade. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera, but it's offset a little bit. So there'll be a couple of times where I'll be cutting straight down and then that gets caught and I have to kind of wiggle it around, which is, is not great. Um, the other thing I don't like is this little lanyard on the back. Uh, it, I guess is it, so you can just dangle it from your hand if you're doing something else, but it's real flimsy looking and you can't take it off. You can cut it off, but then you can't ever put it back on. Um, I would like to see some sort of clasp or something that you could take it off, maybe put it back on if you wanted. Not really a big deal though. So I've got my safety glasses put on. Let's make some uh, test cuts here. You can see how well it works. First thing I'll say is that it's pretty quiet. Um, it's a little hard to tell on camera just how loud things are, but it's quiet enough. You don't need hearing protection. Uh, you could have, carry on a conversation while it's cutting. So I'm gonna cut this two by four here. You'll see I've got that clamped down. You'll see why in a second. This is a very squishy two by four. It's uh, not you know, the old growth or anything crazy like that. So it should have no problem cutting through this. All right, so you'll see that it actually did struggle quite a bit with that. You have to use two hands. If you try to use one hand, um, you're trying to push down with your wrist. It really doesn't work real well. If you put another hand up here, you can get a lot more force into it, and it seems like it needs a good bit of force to cut well. So it struggles with that, um, and you'll see that the cut that it leaves is, is pretty poor too, so also not great. <clears throat> um, it go goes reasonably quickly. You know, a regular jigsaw might go about the same speed, but it has no, no chance against a circular saw. So let's try a different material and see if it works a little better. All right, so here I've got a scrap of a half inch plywood, so hopefully I'll go through this a lot quicker. I think one of the problems is that the teeth on this are so small that on a, a thick piece of wood like a two by four, they get clogged in the, the gullets of the teeth. So hopefully on a little bit of a uh, smaller piece, it'll cut much faster. <laughs> So it did cut a lot better there, um, but it still leaves this really raggedy edge on the end. And of course you don't really have any control over you know, it wandering around a little, so it's not going to be the straightest cut in the world. 
Um, the other thing is that this blade gets super hot when you cut with it. You can see there's even some discoloration at the end there. Um, I guess that's just the nature of the beast. So it didn't work real well with dried wood, but some of the product literature showed it being used on tree for like tree trimming, cutting branches down, that sort of thing. Now you can't cut a really big branch, the blade's only that big, um, but maybe it'll work well on something like this. So this is a, a, a piece of wood off a maple tree that I just cut, cut off the tree, um, so it's nice and fresh. Maybe the, the uh, wetness of the wood will help cool the blade and it'll cut a little better because of that. So let's see how it does. So it works, but it takes an awful lot of pressure to do that. Um, you'll see me rocking it back and that's to try to get it to dig in. Even with my hand up top here, I'm either a little well, don't want to put it that much force on it or it's a little hard to put that much force on it and most of the times if you're trying to cut a branch down a tree you're going to be waving it up in the air you're not going to have it nice and right in front of you like that uh, one of the other problems you'll notice that the teeth get completely clogged with wood chips and all these chips get stuck and built up in here and just smash in here it doesn't seem to affect the performance at all but it also doesn't really seem like a good thing either the other thing is if you're going to cut a piece of wood like this you can just use one of these they're like 20 bucks and cuts it faster, makes a cleaner cut. You don't have to worry about a battery, so just a better tool. So I'm struggling to find anything that this is really excels at. Now one thing that you can do with a chainsaw that's pretty neat is you can just plunge it into the wood. It's got teeth on the tip, so it should be able to cut as you plunge. Um, so maybe the, let's try that out and see how well that works. So it does work. I don't really know why you'd ever really want to do that. Um, it's a pretty raggedy cut, so you, you know, you're not going to use that for fine work, woodworking or something like that. If you want to do that, a jigsaw with a blade that has teeth that go right to the tip, it's a plunge blade, it's meant for doing this sort of thing, will work much better. You can just come in here, cuts a lot easier, and works a lot better, makes a nice cleaner cut, and you have a lot more control over what it's doing. At the end of the day, we're left with a really neat concept. You can imagine the, the, the engineers over in Germany coming up with this little mini chainsaw thing, being like, this is going to be the best thing ever. We're going to shrink a chainsaw down, make it about that big. It'll slice through everything. But it just doesn't work well. Um, there isn't anything that it really exceeds at. It's not great for trimming trees, cutting branches. It's not great for cutting two by fours. It's not great for cutting even thin pieces of plywood. For pretty much any situation, I can think of a better tool, either a jigsaw or a cordless uh, hacksaw um, that would work just work better or even a hand tool that's just going to cut faster, be lighter and easier to use. It's really a shame. It's really nicely engineered, um, but just isn't that good a tool. Thanks for watching. If there is something that you think this thing is really great at, let me know in the comments below.